everyone and here we are again we're just about to leave um, Whittock in Wolverhampton we're going to stop and get some water on the way um, and it's, and it's beautiful day. absolutely beautiful sun scorching day yeah and it's out you know we're more creamed up and ready to go so uh, yeah enjoy the uh, enjoy the vlog folks and uh, we'll see you along the way enjoy Hi folks and welcome. We're leaving Whittock in Wolverhampton now. We were due to go to Carth Heath, um, but by the time we got all the videos in and edited, it was absolutely humongous. So I broke it down into three parts, and today we're going to be going from Whittock up to the uh, Wild, Wildlife and Activity Centre in uh, Wolverhampton, where we'll pick up some water. Okay, enjoy the cruise, folks. Just coming up to Whittick Bridge here now. Um, if you have got a car, there is some parking on the uh, on the left hand side here as we just go under the bridge, and there's also some parking on the opposite side, um, left hand side as we go under the bridge. So you, there's plenty of room to park your car there if you need to. Um, yeah, and some uh, welcome shade just under this bridge now. Nice and nice and cool while you go under here. So you can see why they uh, why they line the towpath with trees to try and keep the working boat people uh, cool. As we just emerge from this bridge now, um, you can moor on the left hand side here, and on the right hand side, as you can see right there, is a little orchard, and the orchard belongs to the bungalow up above. But this is where you can see some deers. Um, we've often seen uh, deers even in the day here. Um, I'll pop a bit of footage in next where you'll, uh, where you'll see a little deer. I think it's about half five in the morning, something like that. There goes a little bounder. Just coming up to uh, Whitewick Bridge here with the lock. Um, the boat just gone up before us. Uh, just a bit of bad timing as we took off. Um, but to be fair, the, the, the lady up there seen us coming and uh, started emptying the lock before, uh, just before we got there. So, you know, that's that's nice. You know what I mean? We don't we don't see that all the time. Um, but that's just a, a bit of care and consideration from somebody else to somebody else and that's uh, that's great you know if we could see a bit more there in the world um it'd be a lot better place just hanging about a little bit here just uh, waiting for jill to prep that lock for us
Yeah, so here we have rising up in uh, Wicked Lock. Um, everything nicely trimmed round here, edges and bushes, and looking very nice. Let's see if we get up. There's Jew up there doing a grind. He loves the locks, really. Wittick Lock has a rise of 8 foot 8 inches. Here we have the uh, nice beautiful uh, mode area at Whitewick Lock. And as you can see we've got the overflow from the top of the canal down into the uh, into the lower one. Um, oof, absolutely brilliant how they thought this up back then. In the days that they uh, they built the canal, fantastic. Char Bella just pulling away from Witty Clock, and as you can see, we've got a windy knoll on the on the right hand side there. Um, we have turned around there before and our boat is 59 foot long, so you should be fine at that. I don't think you can see that guys actually that water is there and down there you know um, I ain't sure what that weed is but uh, every time we seem to pass that it is um, the water super clear so whatever that does seems to it seems to be very good for the water you know, I only really noticed it as much on the uh, Staffs and Worcester. Um, and, and from about here, up to about the Strop Union Canal, something like that. And it's uh, an underwater, you can normally see straight to the bottom, and all the bricks and all, you know what I mean? It's like um, unusually clear, should, should we say. So, uh, yeah, if anybody knows what that weed is, stick it down in the comments. Um, Always good to learn. Tell you what, guys, we've been getting some help today. Um, just met a, one of the CRT workers just down on the other lock there, on the uh, wicked lock. Um, and while he was doing a bit of video in as he was walking up the tower path, he, he walked up in front of us and while I've been hovering in the water waiting for Jim to get up to the lock, he just uh, he just called me on to say, uh, I'll get this lock set for you. So, uh, yeah, we don't, we don't normally get a lot of help, to be fair, and uh, that's really nice. You know, so today's a good day. Staffs of Worcester Canal was probably one of the busiest canals of the Canal Age when it was absolutely flooded with coal boats going up and with potteries coming down but uh, obviously now it's just a beautiful canal now that sort of and it combines two different rings and probably one of the nicest canals that you're going to go up um, as regards scenery and stuff like that um, it's really nice, so uh, well worth the visit.
I must say I do feel awfully lucky that I'm in the time that I am with such beautiful connects, such beautiful canals and, and the money spent on them, you know, to keep them in this in this sort of condition. We're back in the 60s and 70s when they was uh, in a really bad state, you know. Um, we just owe such a lot to the people that um, really pressed the government to keep these canals open or they would have just been grass ditches and lost forever. Just coming into the village of Compton here, um, as you can see on the wall there, there's a sign for a spa shop. There are some other shops up there as well. There's, um, there's a post office, um, there's a chemist, there's off license, takeaways, laundrette, garage. Um, and also just before the bridge here on the left hand side is a nice Italian restaurant. So uh, yeah, it's... Um, you know, there are a lot going on up there, but um, it has got uh, facilities that you might need. You just on the way up there to uh, sort this lock. And uh, Ellie's just told me that there's, uh, there's a boat in the lock coming down, so uh, nice bit of advice. You can just keep, uh, I'll just hover around here a little bit now. And we'll wait for him to, uh, to slip out and we'll slip in. And this is, uh, this is Compton Lock. Um, and this was one of uh, James Brindley's first locks that he built. Um, and he built this as a prototype um, to see how the locks would work and, you know, so he could uh, change any uh, little teething problems or anything like that. So uh, this is a very, very early lock of uh, James Brindley and like I say take quite as important in the uh, in the very summer months about, about uh, whether you get your timing right behind or in front of another boat because uh, there's always somebody coming the other way just to uh, swap it up a bit but in the winter we have a little bit more you know if it means waiting a little bit to wait for somebody to come in the right direction so that most of the locks will be in our favour. Um, but like I say in the uh, in the summer it takes such a big issue because it changes all the time, mile for mile. Boats coming up and boats coming down. Got this one just slipping out the lock now and uh, everything will be left perfect for us. We'll shoot strike in there. We're just holding far enough back here now for this boat just to uh, to creep past us and that will give us plenty of room then to uh, move in and uh, line up nicely for the lock.
especially Fox. <laughs> he ain't never had so many helping hands. Another nice guy just uh, helped you just shut one of the locks we just come into. So, Compton Lock. Absolutely fantastic. Here we're just coming to the top of uh, the lock and this is Compton Lock and this is 9 foot 4 inches deep. Hi guys, this is me just picking a stick out of the uh, canal so uh, just be careful when you do get them out of the canal that you wash your hands after um, you know with all the bacteria and stuff that's in the water uh, okay I just thought I'd put that in and to make sure you're careful as you're going along Joe can sit back and relax a little bit now. Um, we've just come through Compton Lock, which is the uh, the last rising lock from uh, from Starport, and now we've got a, a about a ten mile level pound um, straight up to Gailey. Then once we get up to Gailey, then we'll start to drop down um, down back towards the Trent and Mersey. So uh, sit back, Joe, and uh, where's the coffee?
that little pap on the ute of folks who just to uh, entertain a young kid that was um, standing up on the bridge with his mum. But um, I would encourage uh, more people to use their own in the right situation. Um, when you, when you, you know, if you can't sit around the bridge or you can't sit around the bend, they'll be frightened to blow your router because it's 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 getting lost, um, and it's, it's you know it's just good information for somebody coming the other way that they can set up on a different line or or at least be ready to stop. So uh, yeah, they'll never be frightened to use your horn in the right situation, folks. It still amazes me how you can get these lovely green roots running through uh, built up urban areas. Um, you know, it's quite thick here through Wolverhampton. Um, and yet you get down on the canal and you would think you was in the middle of nowhere. You know, it's, uh, it's no wonder at it, everybody's, uh, everybody's trying to get on them, especially since Covid. It's, um, I think it's just brought new life to the canal. Here on the left hand side you've got uh, an old wharf that looks like he's uh, diversified into um, keeping uh, like a caravan park and you know storing caravans and campers and stuff so uh, well done too. We're just coming up to Horden Road Bridge 62A and immediately following this is the disused railway bridge. Just going to moor up on this floating pontoon at the uh, Wildlife Centre um, just to get a refill of our water. Um, yeah, as long as you've got a water mate key, then uh, the, we did call in advance and the lady said it was absolutely fine to have a fill of water. Um, if you're using the facility, then obviously treat it with a bit of respect and leave it as you find it. Um, I always think it's best to call in advance and just uh, get the okay from the ossie's mouth. Um, and uh, I would do that probably Monday to Friday because I don't think them there on weekends. Just while we were waiting for the water to fill, I was just uh, filming some of these little uh, these little dragonflies um, flying around, lying on the lying on the reeds in the sun. Very nice. <laughs> 